Hello my soccer universe, let's do something a little bit uh, different. I was uh, very much in doubt uh, how I should do the videos now going forward. I wanted to talk about Le Classique in France and also Kylian Mbappé. I don't have much time tomorrow to do it. I also know I want to talk about the Classico, but then there's a midweek fake fixtures. And so I decided, okay, with a little time, let's just make a Classico video and then talk about everything that happened in Spain over the past two match days then. So uh, past weekend and the upcoming uh, midweek fixtures in a separate video. So I think that makes uh, the most sense for me. And tomorrow then I will have uh, probably the time to talk also a little bit about what's happening in France and a little bit catching up there with the general ideas as well, because I honestly really have only seen uh, PSG beating OM, but there's also a little bit Spanish and Barca uh, connections there. In any case, the Classico. Uh, overall, I have to say it felt very comfortable for Real Madrid. I really got to gotta, gotta say, uh, for most of the time, I thought that Real Madrid is going to play this home. And to the point where I even thought uh, when the third goal uh, went in, that was then disallowed from Benzema, that, oh, this could get ugly and Real Madrid is now taking revenge to what uh, Barcelona did to them earlier this year. And maybe that's my only real criticism of Real Madrid, that they probably didn't go that much for the jug jugular because Barcelona were right there for the taking and you could see it actually in the first two goals. It epitomized everything there. Barcelona having loads of this uh, possession, but being slow and sluggish and not really having an idea. And I honestly, yes, hindsight is 2020, but I, I heard so many discussions about the lineup and I really think that Xavi got the lineup wrong. You cannot play a turtle like Busquets in uh, such a game. The energy for Barcelona came as soon as he brought the younger players on. Yes, on a um, potentially tied Real Madrid, although they didn't have to do much. Uh, it is easy to spring on young players that have energy. But it was Ferran Torres, Gavis and Ansu Fati that really turned the game around. I also think that uh, he should slowly try and give Francesi a little bit more time because he gives you a different energy. He is young. He is aggressive. Uh, yes, he does not have the fine passing of a Sergio Busquets, but I think this is what Barca would need if you really want to go into a new Barca mode. Real Madrid is much further along. And I mean, Fede Valverde uh, and Vinicius Junior in there are great. And then they still play the old guys with Modric and Kroos. And did you see the first goal? I mean, it was a Barca attack that got intercepted and Kroos, he's not sprinting. I mean, he's running. Uh, he's in a um, duel with Busquets, who, you know, he is probably the only man on, on the pitch that is slower than him. He is stronger. He plays it again to Vinicius Jr., who, of course, has loads of speed. The Barca defense do not know how to, how to defend him. He goes through. The, uh, his shot is saved, but it bounces all the way to Benzema that the Barca defense uh, forgot. And he can pick his corner and make it 1-0 for Real Madrid. And that almost settled the game already. It was not the winner. But uh, even the second uh, a, a goal was, was of a similar qual uh, quality where uh, it was a cross in that Eric Garcia, who honestly should not play for Barca, he might be a great footballer, but he's for sure not a great defender. I mean, the goals that he caused already, and especially the one uh, against in and here also, he gets his head on the ball, makes the ball sharp, it goes again to Vinicius Jr., who then is duly stopped. However, the passing goes a little bit out to uh, Fela Mendy, who can pass it back to Valverde. And as soon as Mendy plays the ball to Valverde, you can see eight Barca players in the box. And no one is marking any of the Real Madrid players who all are standing around. And Valverde, again, can pick his corner, make it 2-0. It was that easy for Real Madrid. And I think this was the only problem for Real Madrid, that it was that easy, that I thought that we, again, without much effort, we can uh, move on. And then actually Barcelona made it for a short period a game. Uh, we have to match that after the 1-0, uh, Lewandowski had a golden chance that he usually buries. So he could have made it 1-1. 
also have to mention that when it was 2-0, there was a challenge on Lewandowski that I think Cavajal is it is just right. It's just all right. I mean, I think Lewandowski also wanted that penalty. So I think I was all right in the end. It was not given. It would not have been overturned at VAR. But if it was given, I also could have understood. So uh, I think it. Uh, this was a potential uh, tough call. The goal that Barca scored was well played. Uh, the way that Ansu Fati, again, he came in, uh, plays with Lewandowski, who backheels it into a path, path of uh, Ferran Torres, who can put it in the, in, the, in the empty net. That was actually brilliantly played. And at that moment, I really thought that Barcelona might uh, rise from the dead because they were dead for most of the game. But bringing on the young ones, and I mean, uh, Gavi. I think he needs to have his emotions a little bit more under control because he's always at the risk of a red card. I mean, he, he constantly gets a yellow, but at least he brings some fire that is needed for Barca. That was okay. He comes on uh, and he changes definitely the, the dynamic of the team. Uh, I was a little bit then surprised that Pedri came off and Casey came on. That actually then thereafter came came off because Pedri is amazing. But I think with Pedri you also need to manage the minutes. So yeah, uh, Barca was pressing then and even had a golden chance to equalize. Where Fati I think pulled it then just a little bit wide. Uh, and again, why is Fati not playing? Is he really not uh, fit? This is for me a little bit of an enigma because I was never convinced that Rafinha... I thought that maybe Dembele has a little bit of a chance if he gets it together to do something for Barca. I never had that feeling for Rafinha. I don't think he is fit for that high level. He played great at Leeds, but who is Leeds and who are Barca? And these are exactly these, these transfers that really annoy me with Barcelona. Not only the general, but uh, the transfer window. Yes, they got many great players with no money, but uh, the players that they got were not that convincing. Instead of Eric Garcia, get a proper defender. Yes, you got Jules Conte, he's injured, blah, 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 but have at least a second good option there. I know he's not flashy. So this is it. Any case, Barca were pressing, however, then the one car contact. Real Madrid go forward and Eric Garcia steps clearly. It's a stupid tackle. I mean, Rodrigo has the ball, he plays the ball, and the way he steps in backward onto the foot, did he really think he will get the ball this way? It is a clear penalty. It didn't look maybe at the first time, although the way that Rodrigo fell, uh, but first re replay, it's clear that this is a penalty. It's 3-1 and it is the right result. I think it could have been even more overall. I think Real Madrid were really, really comfortable until they weren't. But then just a little bit, you get the penalty. It, it is through and the game is done and dusted. Um, of course, I uh, Barca president going to the referees and the man, why didn't they look at the, at, the, at the penalty? I think it's just polemics. Barca needs to eat a whole lot of humble buy and especially when I look at the upcoming program. The whole season can end right there. Play Villarreal next, which they probably will win at Athletic, so they have a home set, a Villarreal Athletic uh, Club. But uh, two tough games. They play Bayern Munich, also at home, but all three of these really, really hard, and then Valencia away. I don't see it getting easier. October is a really, really, really tough month. You already lost to Inter, you're most likely out of the Champions League, you're only three points behind Real Madrid, but now you need to show character. And this was the first time that Barcelona went behind in, 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 in a game in the league. And they didn't do anything. I just think that the project is not far enough yet. And the people in charge are not willing to admit to this. And my favorite statistic is, and yes, mitigating circumstance, there's a little bit of Messi still in there. But Ronald Koeman... At the same time as uh, Xavi has a better record than Xavi. I think Barca should stick with Xavi. Xavi uh, needs to be given time. However, he is not. He needs to be a little bit more forward thinking. And I don't want to hear from him anymore. This is the way. This is the way. This is the way. I don't want to hear that. I want that he is facing it up. That he is a little bit, a bit mumble. He's not always... 
uh, so irate on the sideline. Look at Angelotti. And for me, this for me this at the moment, and now we're going a little bit away from from, from the Classico. I think the difference between Angelotti and Xavi is the distinction between Real Madrid and Barcelona at the moment. One, there's class, there is a certain um, real, a, a realism, a pragmatism also, but in general, knowing about your own strength and also admitting here and there a mistake, if you may made it, work on it, moving forward. And also, yes, you might think about Real Madrid, what you want, they are one of the Super League clubs, blah, 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 Florentino Perry still is uh, going down that route. Okay, that's maybe not so cool. But when I look just at the team and the way that the team, you have the old players, but they are slowly uh, replaced. And can I just say, Ferre Verde and uh, Aurelien Chouameni played excellently. But they have the old guard there, they're making the right changes. This is something Bars is completely missing. And it's always this self uh, not being realistic of where you stand. That bugs me because I think if Barca would focus on their young core, you might have two relatively rough years, but you even saw that in a down year, you easily finish second. I think Champions League qualification for Barca, even if they play with the Yanks, is always in there. But this is a way that many could follow much easier than the route that they have chosen right now. That's where I want to end it. And yes, it's another Barca rant. It was more or less Barca heavy. Um, but this is basically, basically, I'm annoyed. I am annoyed, but I also have to say I'm in awe of what Real Madrid uh, have been doing. Um, I think at this moment they are probably potentially with, together with Bayern by Bayern the only teams that I think can challenge a Premier League team for the Champions League title. They look settled. They got rid of Casemiro and it's not showing at this moment. Yes, they have not been playing great, but they have been very much saving their energies. Uh, and yes, had an easier Champions League group, but you know, that's what, what you get for being champions overall. So I really think that Real Madrid on a very, very, very good path. And it is very reminiscent about 20 years ago, there was a similar gap between Real Madrid and Barcelona. The only difference back then the league generally was stronger. It was much more even than what it is right now, where I have to say that um, outside the big two, there is not a team that, while there are many exciting teams in La Liga, there's not a team that is ready to challenge the top two. It's a little bit sad. Atletico Madrid could do it. I think they also are past in, also in a rebuild building mode. And what, what really annoys me is that then other teams cannot get in there but that's a video for another time so yeah this was my general classical recap uh, i really would like to know what you thought about uh, the classical the situation of real madrid versus barcelona in general okay one last last thing i really didn't like that barca put drake's logo up there not that i have anything against an owl it just doesn't look right on a football shirt i just doesn't but it was nice to see that the two teams can play in their first team colors because the classical before that, I was glad that Barcelona won that one uh, big because you can't play black against yellow. But that's beside the point. Any case, please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with all that, have a wonderful day. Bye!